Hello, my name is Stephanie Elko Thomas, a fourth generation Rusin American. This video is brought to you by the Carpatho Rusin Society. Enjoy! Hi, this is Dean Poloka, host of the Carpatho Rusin Society Heritage Program. In the decades and centuries past, the summer months in the Carpatho Rusin homeland represented a laborious time where working in the fields was necessary to maintain a meager semi-agrarian lifestyle. The focal point of the season was the summer solstice festival that centered around St. John's Day. The feast of the birth of St. John the Baptist is June 24th on the Gregorian or New Calendar and July 7th on the Julian or Old Calendar. This celebration, called Ivangen, Kupalo, or Sobitka, has its roots in ancient Slavic pagan traditions. With the onset of Christianization by Saint Cyril Methodius in the ninth century, it was soon realized that these pagan rituals were not able to be easily discarded. Instead, they were transformed into celebrations centered around Saint John's Day. In this short video, I will describe how these rituals turned into celebrations that are still observed in many Carpatha Rusin villages today, albeit in a more condensed form. Before Christianity, Carpatha Rusins, along with all Slavic peoples, worshiped many gods. These polytheistic beliefs and rituals were ingrained into every facet of life. The supreme deity was a god named Perun. He was the god of thunder and lightning, the ruler of the living world. The goddess worshipped during this celebration was Kupalo, the goddess of love and harvest. It was believed that Kupalo was the personification of Earth's fertility. In preparation for the upcoming harvest, Carpatha Rusins took this celebratory time to purify themselves through fire and water rituals, gather various plants for mystical and medicinal purposes, and finally, celebrate various themes of love. The name Kupalo derives from the verb kupati, which means to bathe. On the eve of the summer solstice, all fires in the village would be extinguished. The unmarried boys of the village would go either to the highest point in the village or near a stream to ignite the sobitka, a large bonfire. The unmarried girls of the village would then arrive with hay to feed the fire. Together, they sang ritual songs about the upcoming harvest, as well as love and danced Khorovod around the fire. Khorovod is a ritualistic circle dance, usually danced by the girls. In this instance, both boys and girls danced the Khorovod around the fire. Around the same time, certain flowers and herbs would be collected. It was thought that in addition to their medicinal value, they also possessed mystical powers that could ward off evil spirits and protect homes from lightning and fire. These flowers and herbs, called Gilia, St. John's herbs, would be collected and later blessed in church during the feast day liturgy. Some of the herbs would even be hung with icons inside of houses. Every year, new herbs would be collected, and the old herbs would be burned in the Sobitka bonfire since they were blessed. These herbs included Ivanok, St. John's wort, used for depression, alcoholism, and as an antibacterial. Ivanok also provided protection against evil and witchcraft. Deviatsil, horse heel or elf dock, used for coughs, asthma, and bronchitis. Deviatsil restored the balance of mind and body. Odilia, or valerian, used for insomnia, headaches, and digestive problems. Miata, peppermint, used for stomach issues, nausea, and sinus problems. Rumyanok, chamomile, used for hay fever a sleep aid, and against skin irritants. Rumianok was also used to tell fortunes. Some poisonous herbs were used, such as rostopas, tetherwort, 
used for eczema and as an expectorant. Nadragolia, belladonna, or deadly nightshade, used as a pain reliever and as a mild sedative. Sometimes these flowers would be tied with a whip in the hope that the symbolic gesture would help keep the cattle in the pasture together. These herbs were also used to treat domestic animals throughout the year. It was believed that at midnight, ferns would blossom. Anyone who would find the fern blossom would receive riches. We know today that ferns do not blossom, but traditionally, they were still collected for their magical powers to ward off evil spirits. Since ferns are moisture-loving plants, they were also used to summon rain. Unmarried women would collect fragrant herbs and flowers and wore them as wreaths on their head to attract the unmarried men. These wreaths were a sign of a girl's fertility and availability. The girls would attempt to determine their marital future by removing the wreaths and floating them down the stream. Depending on its path, their future would be revealed. For example, the girl whose wreath traveled the farthest was expected to be married the soonest. Many times, boys would jump into the streams to retrieve the wreaths in hopes of becoming romantically involved with its owner. In Christian times, this also became a tradition to honor Christ's baptism in the Jordan River by St. John. Water and fire played a crucial role in the midsummer celebration. As the sun came up the next day over the lakes and streams, it was believed that the waters were christened by Kupalo, later, after Christianization, St. John. People would bathe in these waters to ensure strength for the upcoming harvest and to be healed against skin diseases and evil possession. If no waters ran through the village, then dew would be collected and used to wash after sunrise. Also, villagers would roll around dew-laced grass alone and naked for the same purpose. As the Sabitka bonfire continued to burn, the remainder of the villagers would gather and bring discarded items to be burned as a symbolic purification of old habits. Fire jumping would take place to purify souls and to gather strength for the harvest. Couples would jump the fire while holding hands to ensure long-lasting relationships. Cattle were chased through the fire to ensure fertility. Effigies of Kupalo were burned and the ashes spread into the fields to represent the decline in Earth's fertility. Brands from the smoldering fire were taken by the boys and run out to the fields. They were left among the cabbage, potatoes, and other crops to protect them against pets. Also, smoldering brands would be taken back to homes and used to restart the fires in the ovens. Thank you for joining me today on this brief explanation on the traditions surrounding St. John's Day. Hi everyone, thanks for watching our video brought to you by the Carpathia Rusin Society. My name is Stephanie Elko Thomas, a fourth generation Rusin American born and raised in Northeastern Pennsylvania. The Carpathia Rusin Society is a nonprofit that exists to perpetuate the living heritage of the Rusin people. CRS does this by sharing linguistic, historic, genealogical, and cultural knowledge. To learn more, be sure to hit the subscribe button below and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Also, don't forget to visit our website at c-rs.org. Thank you.